There isn't very much that one can say except that what, what irony that this should happen in the United States, a country that is dedicated to law and order, a country that believes in the dignity of the individual, and yet uh, an assassin takes the life of our president. I've said uh, to others, and I say to you, that not only has the world lost a very fine and great man and great leader, and that nation lost a great president, but I personally feel a very keen loss, uh, something moving out of one's life. Senator Humphrey, we have asked you here to ponder the question which really only history can answer, but we propose to, to it propound it anyway. What sort of a president do you expect Lyndon Johnson to be? Well, of course, that is truly a question for history. And all that one can do is to uh, venture an opinion from his own experience and his own knowledge of the individual. I've been privileged to know uh, President Lyndon Johnson for many years during all of my service in the United States Senate and as, of course, during his service as Senator and Vice President. I think uh, President Johnson will be a forceful president. He will uh, be a very hard-working and dedicated man. His life is uh, truly consumed by public service and a political life. Uh, I expect him to be a very uh, active president and one that uh, will be uh, very much uh, concerned about programs. Uh, action programs, particularly on the domestic scene. Well, you know him very well. You, you know his drives, his interests. What, are, what are his? What does he feel strongly about? Well, he feels very strongly about this country. Now, that's a broad uh, phrase and uh, it is a generalization. But he's a great patriot. Uh, he uh, loves this nation, and as you know, uh, he uh, thinks a great deal about the security of our nation. He was the chairman of the Subcommittee on Preparedness. He was the chairman of the Subcommittee on uh, State Departments and Foreign Aid Appropriations. So in those two subcommittees in the Senate, President Johnson, as the senator, gained a keen insight into matters of national security, of defense, and of uh, foreign policy. And as the vice president serving with our late and beloved President Kennedy, uh, President Johnson became much more intim intimately acquainted with foreign relations and our international relations. I believe he, it's fair to say that he feels very strongly about, for example, our commitments to our alliances, the strength of this nation, uh, about the uh, interdependence between a prosperous American economy and the necessary strength that we must have for the long-term leadership that we will have to give the world. And his recent utterances, not so recent either. As a matter of fact, we ought to recall that it was President Johnson who, as majority leader of the Senate, guided through the Senate the first civil rights program since the Civil War. He feels strongly about human equality, about equal opportunity. He feels this not only as a political leader, but as a moral commitment. I know this from my personal visits with him. Senator, on this point, civil rights, is there any basis for assuming that this drawing together, this rallying around the president that we're now seeing will possibly make it easier to put a civil rights program through Congress? Well, that's very difficult to uh, predict, uh, but uh, I am I do hope so. I really do hope so. And I, I have a feeling that, uh, that President Johnson will do all that he possibly can to carry through on the policies and the programs of his predecessor. Can I just say a word about that? Certainly. You know, many people are worried these days because of the crisis and the tragedy that we face and this sense of worry and concern is all throughout the world. Our forefathers saw to it that we have a system of government and institutions of democracy that permit the orderly transition of power, the transfer of power without violence or chaos. But in this instance, there's something else. We have a man to follow, a very, very great president, President Kennedy. And in President Johnson, we have one who worked closely with the late and beloved president, not only as a man, but worked with him on program and on policy. I saw this being, as we would say, hammered out on the anvil of uh, of uh, political discussion and, and of thought and philosophy, so that we're going to have a continuity not only of, 
of the of government, but a continuity of basic philosophy and basic political policy at home and abroad. This, to me, is reassuring. Now, both men have their own way of doing things.